If you've ever tried to create a unique double exposure in camera and had less than stellar results, then this video is for you. You'll see how to take an average image and turn it into a unique work of art by combining two images into a stunning double exposure. I'm going to demonstrate this process using Luminar Neo to show you how easy to use the software is. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you how to do it in Photoshop as well. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and if you're ready to create some double exposures, let's get started. These are the images I'm going to be using to combine to make the double exposure. I actually came upon this idea because I processed the images in Snapseed on my phone and created a double exposure there. So you can have fun with your phone images as well if you get the Snapseed app. There's a little bonus tip for you. So I have already processed these images in Luminar. Here's the first one. This is the base image that I'm going to be using to add the other one to. You can see the processing that I've done here. If we look at the before image and after, is I've just sparked up the color and the contrast a little bit to give it a boost. The other two images I've processed as well. Now the trick with doing a double exposure or adding another image to one in Luminar is you're going to be adding it as a layer. So the base image can stay raw, but any that you want to add as a layer must be a JPEG. So the first thing I'm going to do is export these two as full-size JPEGs just to the hard drive. I'm going to put them back in the same folder where the raw files are in a subfolder called exported JPEGs just so I can find them easier. And because they're in a folder that Luminar Neo already recognizes, they should get added into Luminar Neo in the catalog automatically. Let me check my settings, make sure they're exporting as full size, and just hit save. Once they're exported, then I can start creating the double exposure. There you can see now I have two versions. I can tell which is the JPEG because the raw file has this little icon in the upper left corner indicating that it's been edited. So these are the JPEGs here. Now I'm going to select the base image and start by adding a layer. Because this is a new image I'm going to add, I have to choose Load. And then I have to navigate to the folder where the new exported JPEGs are. It's already recognizing that folder. I'm going to start with the silhouette first. Now I processed this one in black and white because I wanted the overlay to just show the shape and not any more details. I processed it really high contrast. So the first and easiest way to make a double exposure is to do a silhouette as your second one. Then you have a few options of how you can interplay the images together. So think about it when you're photographing as well and try to create some silhouettes as well as wider shots and close-up shots so that you have a variety of images to work with. So I'm going to add this as a new image and then pop it in as a new layer. Now the first thing I want to do is flip it because I want the saxophone going the other direction. So I want him sort of over here. And then I want to make this image a lot bigger than the one on the bottom. Then I'm just going to enlarge this one and play around with it until I get something that looks interesting. I want to get rid of this tree over here, and I think I want to make them even bigger. Now the trick with Luminar Neo is these little bounding box, these corners sort of disappear when you get off the screen. So it becomes a little bit tricky, but let's see what we can figure out here. Something kind of like that is what I'm thinking. The next step is to change and play around with the blend mode and the opacity of this layer. Normal blend mode at 100% means that you can't see any of the layer below. 0% opacity means you don't see any of the top layer. It's completely transparent. So let's go 100% but changing the blend mode. In this case, I'm going to try darken or multiply. And then we can try the blend mode. And we end up with something that looks kind of like this. I could also try overlay or screen. So play with the different blend modes and see what you come up with. Each one's going to give you a slightly different look 
And depending on the two images that you're combining, you may need to experiment. I find the ones that work the best, especially when you're dealing with an image on top that's darker than the one on the bottom, is one of these. So darken, multiply, or color burn. Let's actually try color burn. And then if you're happy with sort of the style, then you can play with the opacity. But for this one, I'm kind of happy with soft light and just dialing it down a little bit. Now one thing to keep in mind is that you can edit your image on the top. So the one that we've added as a layer can be edited as well. So I could have left it as a color image and added it and then changed it to black and white here on this layer. I could also do things like add another vignette. Now keep in mind that this vignette is only applying on the top image. So there's a before and after. Now if I want the whole thing to be black and white, all I have to do is go back down to my original image, the bottom layer, and convert it to black and white. Close the layer properties and convert to black and white. And now we have the entire thing black and white. Let's try another version combining the base image with the other image of the saxophone player. So I'm just going to turn the silhouette layer off for now or hide it. And then let's go and add the other one. So this one is actually a horizontal image and I combined this one in my phone to create something different. I went with color on this one. Once again, I need to enlarge it. And I wanted to create more of an abstract with the image that is on top. I'm gonna to try something like this to start and again, play with the blend mode. This time I'm gonna try overlay. So overlay is kind of neat, but it adds a lot of contrast. Any of the ones in this section, overlay, soft light, and hard light, tend to add contrast. Any in this section, lighten based on the top image. So I'm losing the sunset and I'm losing the sax player. Let's try one in this section here, which is darkening. Multiply is actually kind of interesting. And if I leave it a bit faded out, he's just kind of in the background a little bit. Keep in mind, you can also mask the layer. So if I don't want it appearing or covering part of him, I can use a mask and a brush, eraser, and then just lower the strength or opacity and just erase it a little bit from the actual guy. If you wanna see how it looks without the layer, just change the opacity to zero and the effect will sort of disappear for a moment. Then you can decide how intense you want to go with the effect. That looks kind of interesting. Let's try one more. This time I'm going to start with the silhouette and I'm gonna crop in so we're really just focused on him. Just to show you what can be done with a silhouette in this type of effect. Now I'm going to add the other image, the one that was the base before. I've already exported it as a JPEG. And when I add it, I wanna make it so that he's sort of inside himself. This time I'm gonna change the blend mode to lighten. We'll try lighten or screen. Screen looks fairly interesting. Now, if you have a true silhouette with no detail in the background like this, you won't get the sun showing up here. You won't get the sunset. If we wanna fix that, all we have to do is go back to the original image. Now we're on the base one and just add some more contrast. Push down the blacks, push up the whites, and you see this is now a nice clean silhouette. You have to make note of which layer you're editing by the blue outline around the layer. I kind of like it with a little bit of the sky sort of fading through. I might just leave it. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this using Luminar Neo. The key is you need to export the images you want to put as the overlay as new JPEGs first. And then away you go, adding your layers and playing with your blend modes. As promised, let me show you how to do this using Lightroom and Photoshop. So if you're an Adobe user and you prefer to use those products, this is how to do it. Starting with the images in Lightroom, they're already processed just like I did in Luminar Neo. This time you can select all three, 
right click, choose edit in, and all the way down at the bottom, open as layers in Photoshop. This will launch Photoshop if you don't already have it open and load the three images as layers. From there, you can work with them just like I did in Luminar Neo. Once your layers are all open in Photoshop, you can rearrange them like I did here. So I put the silhouette on top, and then of course you can change the blend modes from normal to darken and try a few of the others. When you do it in Photoshop, you'll notice that you get this nice preview. To make the layer bigger in Photoshop, you need to use Transform. So that's under Edit, Free Transform, and then you get the little handles on the corners that you can enlarge. So I want to crop the tree out, make him bigger, something like that. And then play with the blend modes and the opacity. That looks pretty cool. Likewise, if we want to do the inverse with this one, I need to make it larger, obviously, and change the blend mode. That's actually kind of cool, like that. So think about how you can take some of the images that are already in your image library and combine them. I've used portraits in this example, but you could use abstracts, pictures that have texture. They make great overlays and double exposures as well. So have some fun with this technique. If you like my teaching style and want to learn more about how to use Luminar Neo or Photoshop, I have courses on both of those software available on the site. I'll provide a link for you in the description area below. If you'd like to watch another tutorial on YouTube, click here now. Until next time, keep experimenting and have fun.